Welcome back. The US dollar asserted its strength in the New York pre market. At the same time, yields of the US Treasuries went down on an early Tuesday. Following a volatile session yesterday, the benchmark stock indexes closed mixed. Investors are braced for another turbulent week. The S&P 500 is trading lower for the five sessions straight. It's uh, the longest losing streak since December of 2022. The Dow Jones closed yesterday at the lowest mark in five months. The S&P 500 shed 0.17% to close at 4,217 points. Shares of the commodity and energy companies also declined. After a roller coaster in the United States bond market yesterday, Wall Street is going to open quietly with an upward bias. At least the futures on the three major indexes went up in the New York pre market, and the SP 500, the barometer of the stock market's health, is set to extend its growth within the intraday corridor between 4,189 and 4,255 points. The culprit of yesterday's fall in the SP 500 was a spike in its treasury yields. Today, the chart was, mm, has dipped from its peak 5%, and there are rumors that a sell-off in the U.S. treasuries is exaggerated. Anyway, yields of the benchmark 10-year treasuries decreased to 4.8%. There is another reason behind the decline in the U.S. treasury yields. If the Federal Reserve maintains the funds rate at the current elevated level for longer than initially planned, the Treasury Department will have to tackle the snowballing federal debt. This aftermath will be entailed by a new batch of bonds that will be issued to deal with the mounting budget deficit. A deficit of the U.S. state budget surged by 23% over the last fiscal year, and the Treasury Department reported on Friday. Bearing in mind rising energy prices, consumer inflation could pick up steam as a consequence on the back of these factors. Perhaps U.S. Treasuries might not look as a safe haven asset as previously. And this week, investors are shifting focus towards quarterly corporate reports and macroeconomic data. As for the economic calendar, market participants are absorbing surveys on a business activity in the manufacturing, private and service sectors. Until nowadays, the U.S. economy and the labor market has been displaying remarkable resilience to high interest rates. Before the publication of a fresh report, analysts tried to puzzle out whether the U.S. economy remains healthy. What conclusion could be made today? The S&P Global Composite PMI came in at 50.2 points in September, so the index confirmed steady economic growth in the top economy. As for the price component, it increased at a fast the pace last month compared to August mainly due to the appreciating commodities and transport expenses. Obviously, such data benefited the US dollar. Hence, the greenback opened the New, Year, uh, New York session on a positive note and surpassed the landmark resistance at 106 points. The recent drop in the Treasury yields pushed the US dollar down, and the currencies of the G6 basket rushed to take advantage of the greenback's temporary weakness. The US dollar index fell to 105 and half points, an almost one month low. Analysts do not rule out a similar decline at a lesser degree later today. High-tech giants Microsoft and Alphabet are due to report on their corporate profits tonight. The shares of these companies alongside Meta and Amazon account 
for 23.4% in the S&P 500. The response of Wall Street is able to reverse trajectories in the currency market and the US dollar will bear the brunt. Now its index is a trading higher within the intraday candidate between 105 and 40 and 106 and 10. Anyway, the US dollar strength rests on solid fundamentals such as the healthy economy rising exported energy prices and the sea haven status. These tailwinds will cushion a full of the greenback, especially amid the differential between interest rates of the Federal Reserve and other major central banks. The Canadian dollar is a trading in the red today. Clearly, the red-hot U.S. statistics encouraged the U.S. dollar's growth. The loony is sensitive to oil prices, which weakened before the opening bell, where Texas intermediate dropped from $86.2 a barrel to $85 in a few hours. As a result, the U.S. card pair spiked to 1.3720 instantly. Meanwhile, the greenback is rebounding in a confidence after a three-day fall. The Canadian dollar is a losing ground in parallel. The instrument is sticking to the upper border of the range between 1.3661 and 1.3721. The flagship crypto is keeping the bullish momentum and Bitcoin has jumped by 15% this week. Today, the token is extending its rally within an intraday corridor between 30,628 and 25,199 dollars. The main catalyst for such optimism is the realistic scenario of the launch of the first Bitcoin spot ETF in the United States. Such ETFs enable investors to trade on exchanges, thus enhancing the popularity of a cryptocurrency. More good news followed after the US Securities and Exchange Commission dropped its charges against the Ripple cryptocurrency platform. Besides, the US Court of Appeal formalized the victory of a grayscale investment over the regulator, and the authorities didn't allow the company to transfer its Bitcoin trust to an exchange-traded fund. Now that objection has been rejected and Bitcoin spiked to 35,000 in less than an hour and on the early Tuesday. By the way, shares of companies related to cryptocurrency also went up along with it. For example, Coinbase and MicroStrategy. We hope that our video reviews help you make well-rounded trading decisions. We care about your trading success. Your feedback is appreciated. Our analysts are open to answer all your questions. So, see you online tomorrow.